we changed back to the original channel name for a reason. Time to test out something that makes absolutely no sense in the real world, but we're just curious, so we're gonna do it anyway. In this video, I threw in a GTX 1080 Ti, one of the most powerful graphics cards you can currently buy, into a computer that's sporting a $6 CPU. And that price is a little iffy. Sometimes you can find them for like four bucks on eBay, sometimes as much as 10 if people are greedy. Uh, but for the most part, it's sub 10 US dollars. That should say enough about the CPU right there. So without further Further ado, let's uh, let's give it a go. So this is the PC. Here's the CPU heatsink. This very weird chassis, kind of keeping things stable. This is a G210. I reviewed this in a few videos. Check this one out right here if you want more details on that. Uh, I've also showcased this PC itself before. Uh, we've kind of done some benchmarks on it in the past. But what I want to do now, as I discussed earlier, is replace the G210 with the beautiful Accelerate GTX 1080 Ti. Now. If you recall in that video, I know I keep pointing to cards, but if you check out this video here, I talk about how this is a true two-slot car. It uses the reference TI PCB, and it's super thin, super narrow, so we shouldn't have a problem fitting it into the tight spaces uh, that you see in here. i just pop this one out. There we go. Oh, get on in there. Uh, this is like the weirdest thing on YouTube right now. Oh yeah, she's in there. Okay, another problem I didn't think about. We do not have an eight pin and a six pin VGA cable running from this power supply. So we're gonna have to power it using alternative methods. All right, so I've got this 450 watt Integra power supply from Fractal Design that I'm going to jumpstart with a 12, 12 pin jumper here. I recommend uh, all enthusiast PC builders have at least one of these around, good for troubleshooting in the works. And then uh, of course two eight pin VGA cables. Again, this is only gonna be powering a, a graphics card, so I'm not worried about reaching the 450 watt limit. We should be okay there. So this will be powering the graphics card. As long as it's jumped and plugged in, it should be feeding power at will. And then when we turn the PC on, everything else should be powered. Now, the only other thing we need to address here, this is a super old hard drive with Windows XP on it. Can't run the latest NVIDIA drivers on XP. The software isn't compatible, so we're gonna have to use this right here, which is just a, what is this, Toshiba SSD. This has Windows 10 on it, so we're gonna plug this in instead, just hot swap them. Everything should be good to go once we do that. These ribbon cables, though, I am so glad these are extinct. Okay, SATA out, SATA power, out, and then, this is an SSD, we really don't need to mount it anywhere. There, there we go. Just stuff her on inside. Yep, seems legit. Ha, it works. Now I need to plug in the keyboard, but uh, apart from that, we should be good to go. All right, so this is interesting. I'm trying to boot into the SSD. You can see it right there, Toshiba TR150, 240 gigabyte. It's detecting it, but it's not booting into it. Uh, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with how old the other hardware is on board. So I'm gonna see if I can select this drive as the boot drive. My God, this is a super old BIOS. Well, I could not get Windows 10 to load natively on the SSD. So it looks like we're gonna be installing it from scratch, but that's not a problem as long as we can actually test out some games here. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Is it weird that a Pentium D is sporting a 165 hertz refresh rate right now? Just a little weird. Okay, so check this out. All I'm doing at this point is updating Steam. It looks like the computer locked up, something locked up. And you can see cores one and two, that's it. No hyper-threading on this Pentium D830. And CPU usage is pretty much above 50% all the time. Actually, what, something did freeze. Like the whole computer froze, but I can still move the mouse. What is, oh, there we go. What is going on? So, yeah, you can see pegged at 100%. That is uh, actually not surprising. Oh, here it goes, almost finished. Any guesses, any guesses on the score here? Wow, 0.73 points. Mind you, an i7 is doing about five. So...
are you seeing this? Over 200 FPS. No, we're just in the loading screen, mind you, of Left 4 Dead 2. But that's really freaking high. Okay, one thing's for sure, it takes forever to load anything. Okay, yeah. Uh... Two hours later. Okay, so this whole thing did not go according to plan. I kind of expected that. If you noticed right off the bat, I was running Windows 32-bit. This is Windows 10 32-bit, which is kind of an ironic setting in itself because Windows 10 is really new and 32-bit operating systems are kind of out the window by this point. Uh, but they do actually offer Windows 10 32. I installed it and found out that I could not test a majority of the games that I wanted to test. That makes sense, though. So like Rise of the Tomb Raider, GTA 5, a few other games would not run on a 32-bit OS, which meant that I could only test either really old games or games that are just not very demanding in general, so games like Minecraft, and then I actually was able to get Left 4 Dead 2 to run. I'm sorry that I couldn't get GTA 5 and other mainstream games to work, although expect something like this, uh, if we had been able to get GTA 5 to run, I do expect that the game would have had several uh, artifacts, issues that would have made it virtually unplayable. If you take nothing else away from this video, check out our Cinebench scores, R1588CB, compared to a typical i7, they'll score around 1000 CB, you're getting 10% of what you could get from a processing standpoint. That is abysmal. And 11.5, yeah, that's also very abysmal. And another benchmark that should clear things up even more for you, Geekbench 3, 32-bit. You know what, don't even look at the scores. They don't even matter. You're looking at an i5-7600K and the Pentium D830. Just look at how big those bars are for the i5 and how tiny they are for the Pentium D. That is so embarrassing. So of the two games I actually was able to test with this setup, Minecraft was a bit of a letdown and Left 4 Dead 2 was just straight up unplayable, I would say unplayable. Uh, I wasn't able to hold 60 FPS with Left 4 Dead 2. I expected this to be actually a pretty good situation, even though the CPU is clearly a severe bottleneck in this case. Uh, I expected the GPU to just kind of do its thing and not worry about the fact that there weren't many things on the CPU side taking place. This game, however, does appear to leverage a bit of both, and the CPU is definitely crippling our frame rate here. Nothing anywhere near 60 FPS for a majority of the experience, as you can see in the top left there with Fraps running. That's your Fraps counter up there. Uh, Minecraft was a bit of the same. It ran a bit better. I actually was kind of surprised about this. Minecraft is a very weird game when it comes to benchmarks. It's a very weird game when it just comes to gameplay in general and your, your experience. You can change texture packs and do a bunch of things that can really either leverage your graphics card or leverage your CPU, in this case just vanilla Minecraft, the latest updates, uh, was around 30, 40 FPS, not too bad. You could play it, but I can play just as fine on my Ultrabook, and that does not have a dedicated graphics processor at all. Now I'm sure this wasn't a learning experience for most of you. I expect that most of you who are watching this channel already know that pairing a $700 graphics card with a $6 CPU is downright stupid. If you didn't know that, I don't mean to offend you, it just, it is, it's stupid. Just even if you don't know anything about CPUs or GPUs or prices, whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. But if there is something you can take away from this video, it is this. Check CPU usage, especially when you're playing games, when you're doing things that involve both CPU and GPU horsepower. Make sure that those usages aren't anywhere near 100%. If they are, that's telling you that your CPU is at full load or pretty darn close to it, and you should either upgrade your CPU, raise your frequency, or, I don't know, do something else on your PC. With that, if you thought this video was cool, if it satisfied your morbid curiosity, give this one a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.